Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship at First United Methodist Church in Paxton. We're glad that you're here today. And as we get started this morning, we want to share a, a few announcements. Uh, today is Communion Sunday, and hopefully those that are here in person got your little communion cup with the bread and the juice when you came in. And those at home, please be sure you have your elements prepared at home, and we will consecrate them here at the church and extend that to those you have at home. Um, also, if you are watching us on Facebook, there is a link for attendance on the Facebook page, and it's really helpful if you can let us know that you're watching so that we know um, who's here with us. And there are some questions attached to that link that are uh, part of the sermon today if you want to take a look at those and think about those. Um, also, um, as we are reopened now for worship, we could use some additional help with the ushering and checking people in at the door. So if there's anyone that's willing to help with that, if you can let us know or let one of the health and safety team members know, and we'll get you on a schedule so that we can have that help. And then we're also um, doing children's times. And if anybody would like to take a shot at doing the children's time, let me know and we'll get you scheduled for that as well. Um, and uh, Judy has restarted the uh, Community of Viral Disciples study in person. They met back in person today for the first time. So if there's anybody that is a part of that and would like to come to church at 9.15 on Sunday, you're welcome to join with them. We also started the junior and senior high Sunday school classes back in person today. So we're grateful for that. Um, I also want to remind everyone that's here in person of our health and safety team and conference guidelines and protocols for uh, COVID. Uh, first of all, keep six feet of distance between your family and other families. We're not doing passing of the peace. Uh, we're not sharing the offering plates. And there are offering plates scattered throughout the sanctuary. If you want to put your offering and your mission offering in those uh, plates and baskets. Um, when we do the responses and the prayers, you're welcome to do that. Please keep your masks on at all times unless there's some medical reason you need to take your mask off. But keep your mask on when we're doing the responses and do those quietly behind your mask. If you have a prayer request, if you can write that out and get it up here to me, we'll include that in the prayer time. Just raise it up and one of our health and safety team members will grab it and bring it to me. And then uh, if you use the restroom, please be sure to open the door with one of the paper towels that's there on the table or the ledge near the restroom restrooms. And uh, be sure to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with soap and water after you've used the restroom. Uh, we're still not doing any fellowship time or food, but you're welcome to have your, your own drinks here in the sanctuary if you wish. Um, I will mention we have flowers today, and uh, we have a lot of flowers today. And we have two sets of roses up here. It looks like one because they're kind of pushed together, but one set is um, in honor of Sherry Moore. It was given by, by Judy Voorhees. And the other set is for um, the, the Hasting Twins, Alex and Sid's birthday, which was back in December, given by their Nana and Papa Hastings. And then we have two roses up here this morning. And uh, we have a set of twins that was born actually back in December, but they didn't get to come home from the hospital until January. So uh, we have two roses for Alex and Georgie Wilson's twins, Amos Russell and Jude Thomas. And we welcome them into our church family. And uh, one of the churches that I served long ago in my ministry, the pastor always said, just as these roses stand in the shadow of the cross, may these little ones always live in the light of our Savior Jesus Christ. So um, then we are reading together in the book of Acts through the month of February. So there are reading plans on the table over in the um, parlor overflow area if you want one and it was also in the february newsletter uh, we have some things coming up uh, the united methodist women were planning to meet this thursday but because it's going to be so bitter cold this week they have decided to cancel that meeting on thursday and then we are going to have an ash wednesday service on uh, 
February the 17th at 7 p.m. that evening, and we will have it in person for those that want to come to the church, as well as online on Facebook and on the phone. Uh, for the ashes, we, we are going to put ashes in small uh, plastic cups and give those to individuals to put the ashes on your own forehead for Ash Wednesday if you choose to be here in person. So um, plan for that. That will take the place of our evening devotion time that Wednesday evening. And then we have a special birthday coming up at the end of the month. And uh, Irma Tibbetts is going to be turning 90 on February the 28th. And so we're encouraging everyone to send cards to Irma. And if you need an address, you can uh, let us know or get in touch with Judy in the office and she can she can uh, get that arranged for you. And I should have mentioned when I mentioned the flowers that we are having flower signups. So if you haven't gotten that done yet, uh, there's a chart on the uh, bulletin board by the offices and you can choose the date and get that slip filled out and back to Judy in the office. Uh, they are $13 per week. And uh, if you are at home and you don't want to come to church, just call Judy in the office and let her know and she can get you signed up for flowers. And then I also want to continue to give thanks for those who have contributed to our offerings and uh, the building fund and special mission offerings through this time. Um, January was a very strong month and we thank you all very much for your continued giving. And for February, the mission offering is going to be divided three ways to three of our um, United Methodist offerings that we are required to support for being a five-star mission church. So in February, we will be supporting Human Relations, Native American Ministries, and Peace with Justice. And there was information about those in the, Jan I mean, the February newsletter, and I'm going to talk to Cara about getting more information in the next three Sundays so that you can see where, where those um, offerings are going to. We are still collecting the um, bottle caps, plastic bottle caps for the FFA, and also masks for PBL students if you want to make or bring masks. And then the IGA receipts continue coming in. We're grateful for those. And uh, so just continue getting those things to us. And then the food pantry, uh, if you want to make a contribution to the food pantry, what we really need right now is toilet paper. We're running low on toilet paper. So, so uh, if you want to bring some, feel free. You can drop it off here at the church and we'll get it over there for you. I think those are all the announcements that I need to make at this time. So I'm going to invite uh, Jason to come up and lead us in our praise song as we begin our service this morning. Everybody got trials and temptations. Everybody knows heartbreak, isolation. But we can lay our burdens down. Lay our burdens down. What a friend we have in Jesus. He's to us, my sins are gone. I see grace on every horizon, and forever and ever his heart is my home. Everybody has fears, everybody got worries. Everybody knows sorrow, devastation. But we can lay our burdens down. Lay our burdens down. What a friend we have in Jesus. East to west, my sins are gone. I see grace on every horizon. And forever and ever his heart is my home. No more betrayal, for he is faithful. He fills me up and my cup runneth over. No more betrayal, 
for he is faithful how he has proven it over and over no more betrayal for he is faithful he fills me up and my cup runneth over no more betrayal for he is faithful over and over over and oh what a friend we have in jesus east to west my sins are gone i see grace on every horizon and forever and ever his heart is mine what a friend we have in jesus east to west my sins are gone yeah i see grace on every horizon and forever and ever his heart is my home forever and ever his heart is my home thank you jason let's uh, join together now in our opening prayer for this morning Holy God, we have come together to worship you and sing your praises. You are the one who has created the cosmos and the smallest creatures on earth. You give food to whales and sparrows, name the stars, and know the number of hairs on our heads. Powerful one, inspire us today as we hear your word to step out in faith and take risks that will strengthen our faith and build your kingdom here on earth. We pray in the strong name of our Savior Jesus Christ and the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, as we join in our children's time today, uh, we do have one little one in the sanctuary, and I'm going to invite them to come a little bit closer, not all the way down to the front, but a little bit closer down here so that uh, Adeline can see what I'm doing for children's time. And those of you that are watching online, um, please gather around your screens and watch as I share with you children this morning. Okay, so, years ago, there was a late-night talk show host that did a little game that he called Sink or Swim. And he would take items and throw them into a big tank of water and see, he'd ask the audience, do you think this is going to sink? Or not sink or swim, but sink or float. Do you think this is going to sink or do you think it's going to float on top of the water? So we're going to play that little game today, and I'm going to start out with... Uh, a little piece of wood. Do you think this is going to stay on top of the water or sink down under the water? What do you think? Well, let's, let's see what it does. Those of you watching on Facebook, if you want to put your answer in, I know there's a little delay, but if you want to put your answer in the, in the comments, you can play along too. So let's see what this does. Oh, there it floats. Floats on top of the water. Okay, now I have a second item here. I have a little spoon you think the spoon is going to stay on top or is it going to go down to the bottom? What do you think? Think it's going to sink? Let's find out here. Yep, it went down to the bottom. It sank to the bottom. Okay, now here's another item. This is a piece of aluminum foil. What do you think this is going to do? Is it going to sink or is it going to float? I'm going to move that little piece of wood out of there. Let's see what it does. Oh, it floats. Okay, well, what happens if we take this little piece of aluminum foil and we wad it up into a ball like this? Now, do you think it's going to sink or do you think it's going to float? Let's see. Oop, it still floats. <laughs> okay, it still floats. <laughs> okay, now I've got a golf ball here. What do you think the golf ball is going to do? Will it sink or will it float? You think it's going to sink? <laughs> All you have to do is ask a golfer if they've ever hit the ball into the water, what happens to it? And it sinks. <laughs> it sinks. <laughs> no, I, I used to have some floaters that were special balls that were made to float on top of the water so I wouldn't lose them when I played on a game of golf. 
And then the last one is, William made this nice little paper boat for me. Do you think that's going to sink or swim, or sink or float? Let's see. I'm hoping it floats. <laughs> okay, it does, until it gets too much water in it, and then it might sink down. But I wanted to share this with you today um, because there's a, there's a story in the Bible. And have you ever been swimming? Adeline, have you been in a swimming pool? Have you been in a swimming pool? Did you, did you stay on top of the water or did you go down under the water? <laughs> well, I'm not going to throw you in some water today to find out. But, <laughs> but, but there's, a, there's a story in the Bible. And you might remember the story where Jesus fed 5,000 people uh, at one time with just five loaves of bread and two fish. And then when he was done with that day, he was really tired. So he went up on the side of a mountain to pray, and he sent his disciples across the Sea of Galilee in their boat. And a big storm came up, and the disciples were fighting against the waves. And in the middle of the night, all of a sudden, they saw something walking across the water toward them. And it was Jesus. And at first they were afraid. At first they thought maybe it was a ghost, but it was Jesus. He told them that it was him and not to be afraid. And Peter, one of the disciples said, well, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. So what do you think Peter did? What do you think Peter did? He stepped out of the boat and he walked on the water toward Jesus for a few steps, but then he started sinking under the water. Why do you think he sank under the water? Because he took his eyes off of Jesus. And when we keep our eyes on Jesus, he'll help us to do hard things and get through difficult times. But when we take our eyes off of Jesus, we try to do things on our own is when we really struggle. And sometimes we need to step out in faith like Peter did out of the side of the boat and take risks to do things but we need to keep our eyes on Jesus and make sure he's with us and helping us as we do those things and not try to do them all on our own or we'll sink. So keep your eyes on Jesus. So let's pray today and ask God to help us do that. Let's pray together. Jesus, when the storms of life are raging against us, when we need to take risks and step out in faith to do something that's hard, Help us to keep our eyes focused on you and know that you are with us in the storms of life and with us when we do things that require us to step out in faith. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for coming up, Adeline. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. As we come to our time in prayer this morning, um, we would ask prayers for several families in uh, our church and community that have lost loved ones. And uh, I, I mentioned last Sunday the family of Irene Husted, and we celebrated her service on Wednesday of this week. And so ask continued prayers for their family. Also, we got word on Friday that little Lenny that we've been praying for passed away on Thursday night. And so we would ask your prayers for the Hethke family in this time of loss. Um, and uh, a lot of people have been posting on her page on Facebook to give uh, support to the family. So thank you all for your prayers and support for them as well. Um, and then I've been mentioning this week on our uh, Facebook devotion time that uh, Mary Dickinson, who's out in Loda, and some of you may know Mary, her mother passed away earlier this week and would ask prayers for their family and the loss of her mother, Yolanda. Um, prayers continue also for Bonnie Howard, for the loss of her Aunt Gladys, and then also for the Newald family and the loss of Greg's grandfather, Wayne. Um, and we'd ask continued prayers as well for uh, Shelley Curry and the loss of her mother, which happened back earlier in January. Um, prayers continue for Susie as she heals from her broken sternum in the accident about a month ago and continue to keep her in prayer. And then Pat Carlson's doing really well with her recovery from her knee replacement. So th thank you for your prayers for her. Uh, for Bonnie Howard's brother Jim as he's in assisted living out in Portland and struggling with Parkinson's. Keep him in prayer. For uh, Connie Sauer, she continues the infusions with her 
liver, for, to help liver function, and for Gene Starkey's friend, Charles Gregory, who is um, recovering from surgery to remove a growth on his bladder and uh, facing additional treatments following that surgery about uh, a couple months ago now. Uh, Mary Rogers is doing well as she continues with her chemotherapy treatments for lymphoma, so thank you for your prayers for Mary, and also uh, prayers for Aline as she's doing well and back, back in her place again after having uh, surgery to repair a broken wrist from a fall, and so she's doing well. Uh, we continue prayers for Gary Ripsky's cousin's wife, Evelyn, and for her little great-grandson, Owen, as uh, both of them are having treatments following Evelyn's breast cancer surgery back in the fall, and Owen had surgery to remove a growth from his bladder and part of the bladder a couple months ago. And we continue to pray for Alex as he recovers from his back surgery. Um, he was here for Sunday school this morning and planning to go back to school in person tomorrow. So that's a good sign. He's making good progress as he recovers. And then uh, continued prayers for Bill Mag, who is Julie Mag's husband at home, but uh, needing prayers for recovery from an infection in the bone in his leg. And then we also ask prayers for Marguerite Stegan's daughter, Melinda, who was diagnosed with two inoperable brain tumors, and ask your prayers to continue for them. Um, I shared last week that uh, Joyce Carlson's son, Scott, is fighting stage four cancer, and he's been back in the hospital again, so continue to keep him in prayer. But uh, Joyce is also over at Accolade now, getting some therapy, trying to build up some strength, so keep Joyce in your prayers too. And then we're asking prayers for Martha Zimmerman, who is the mother of Terry Iyer and Ellen Lee. Uh, they brought her home from the hospital, but she's home on hospice care. And I don't know the full story there, but uh, ask prayers for that family as well. We continue to pray for those families that are struggling with COVID still, uh, especially those that are in the hospitals on ventilators and um, um, those who are working in healthcare as well, that they would stay safe. And as the vaccines continue to increase, we're grateful that people are getting vaccinated and would encourage everyone to, to do that as well. Um, and then uh, our friends in Tennessee, Rick and Cindy, haven't heard anything from Cindy all week, which is kind of unusual. <laughs> but that probably means they're really busy with Rick doing his therapy and trying to get his strength built back up. But thank you for your prayers for them. Uh, continued prayers for Hunter and his girlfriend Emily as they're both home now after a serious accident last July and prayers for, for their continued recovery. And then for Lita, uh, Bonnie's neighbor who's still waiting to have an aneurysm removed from her brain and her father who's home on oxygen after having COVID a couple months ago, uh, prayers that he can get weaned off of that oxygen. And prayers for others that are fighting cancer for Karen Marshall, Amanda Gooden's aunt. Uh, we pray for the other little ones, for Lincoln Downing. Uh, Lincoln was back in the hospital again this week with problems with his NG tube with, that they feed him through. But he's back home and uh, doing pretty well, still in remission from the, uh, the cancer, but not totally cancer free. And we're praying that the additional spots will clear up for Lincoln. And then also for little Emma, and they're doing everything they can to keep things normal for Emma. They had another Make-A-Wish um, event this weekend up in Chicago for her. So thank you for your prayers for her as well as uh, she is fighting cancer that has now gotten into her spinal fluid. Um, prayers for my friend Tammy, who is living with her daughter in Indiana right now. Uh, she had a mastectomy back in, I think, December or early January, but now she's going to have a second mastectomy and lymph nodes removed on uh, February the 18th, so keep her in your prayers. And we continue prayers, too, for Ashley Williams Nazer's mother-in-law, Carol, who has a mass behind her heart and lungs and congestive heart failure. Please keep her in prayer. And for Bonnie's sister-in-law, Minako, whose mother is in rehab over in Japan and has not been able to be with her. Uh, this happened way back at the beginning of the summer last year that she had a cerebral hemorrhage and she is 
holding on over there, but we're praying that Monaco can get over to be with her mother eventually. And continued prayers for our missionaries, uh, the Ulrichs, the Magumbas, and Connie Wyke, and the work that they're doing to bring Jesus to people. And especially the Ulrichs in Malawi, uh, Luke has shared that the number of COVID cases has increased over there. So we pray for their safety. And, uh, and then also I mentioned that Charles and Destiny in Uganda, they had a presidential election, and I wasn't aware it had already happened, but it happened in January. But the, uh, the president that was in power was reelected, but people started posting things on social media that he didn't like, and so he banned social media completely in the country of Uganda. And that's why we haven't heard from Charles and Destiny for about a month now. So keep them in prayer. Uh, it's hard for them to not be able to, to reach out to, to other people in that way. And for our military personnel, we pray for um, Ellie's son-in-law, Spencer, and Terry's nephew, Abram, as they continue their work with the military and other military personnel who are stationed in other parts of the, of the world, including in our own nation. So let's join our hearts in prayer as we go to the Lord in prayer together. Loving and gracious God, we are so grateful that you are present with us and that uh, we, we remember to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus at all times. Help us, Lord, to stay above water and to know that you are with us and to give praise to you for your constant presence in our lives. We pray that you would forgive us if we have fallen short, uh, if we've taken our eyes off of you and fallen into the, the ways of the world around us. Give us that cleansing as you forgive us and make us whole again. And be with those that we've lifted up here this morning and you've heard their names and you know their situations and we're grateful for your presence and your power at work in each one's life. We especially pray for those that are fighting cancer, and once again, lift them up to you and pray for your healing power. Lord, we pray for the Hethke family in the loss of little Lenny. And Lord, we've, we've all been praying for her, but we, we know that in this world there is death and that death is not the end. That death is just the, the way that we transition over into heaven. And we thank you that Lenny is now resting in your arms, but we pray for your strength and your comfort for this family in this devastating time of loss. We pray for other families that have lost loved ones as well and pray that you'd surround them with your love and care. And Lord, we, we do lift up um, the little ones who are fighting cancer and pray for your healing hand to be upon them and continued prayers for Owen and Lincoln and Emma and uh, the adults as well that we know are fighting and just pray for your, your strength and healing every day. We pray for those that are dealing with COVID still and thank you for the vaccines that are being effective, but give strength and healing to those in, on ventilators and the hospitals. Watch over the healthcare staff and keep them in your care as they uh, work in the hospitals and the nursing homes and other places where they take risks every day. And Lord, be with our military personnel and surround them with your love and care. We pray for their safety and the work that they're doing, whether they're overseas or closer to home. And we pray for our missionary families and ask your guidance for them as they share the good news of Jesus and as they, they take care of needs of the people in the countries and areas where they serve. Be with all of them and keep them in your care. And be with us and guide us as we celebrate and worship together. And then as we go back to our homes and out into the world, may we share the love of Jesus wherever we are. We lift our hearts and our lives and our prayers to you. In the strong and mighty name of our Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture for this morning is Matthew chapter 14 verses 22 through 33, and this is the familiar story that I was sharing with the children in the children's time this morning. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. 
When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me! Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And then one verse from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, where the Apostle Paul writes, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. May God bless this reading and hearing of his word, for this is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Would you please join your hearts with me in prayer? Loving God, we give you thanks today for this story in the scripture that reminds us of keeping our eyes on Jesus and stepping out in faith. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be at work in and our hearts and among us this morning to draw us closer to you and that you would speak through me to the hearts of your people, that together we may be uplifted and even challenged in our living for you. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, some of you probably heard this before, but a, a priest, a rabbi, and a pastor went out fishing one day. And yes, this is a joke. Okay. <laughs> After they were in the boat and a ways out from the shore, the priest said, I forgot to bring my water bottle. And so he climbed out of the boat, walked across the water to the shore, got his water bottle, and walked back to the boat. A little while later, the rabbi said, I need to get some more bait. So he climbed out of the boat, walked on the water to the shore, got his bait, and walked back to the boat. The pastor looked at the two of them and said, well, I need to go get something too. So he climbed out of the boat and immediately sank down under the water. And the priest turned to the rabbi and said, do you think we should have told him where the rocks are? So in the Gospel of Matthew, we find the account of Jesus walking on water. And while this in, in and of itself is a miracle and deserves recognition, the focus for this week should be rather on Peter's decision to step out of the boat and take a step of faith. Peter knew the laws of nature. And if Ron Morrison was still with us, he could explain to us the physics behind water surface tension and how you actually can't walk on water with just your bare feet. <laughs> But Peter knew that nobody could walk on water, and there were no rocks there to walk on either. <laughs> Yet he trusted Jesus enough to step out of the boat and take a risk. And even though he was scared and began to sink, Jesus still rescued him and spoke to Peter's faith, or lack thereof. So if we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, we can have the faith to step out of the boat as well, or as Mark Batterson says in his book, to cut the rope and take those risks that seem to go against even laws of nature. Behind every success story is that one moment where someone did something risky, and it opened the door wide for possibility beyond their dreams. That one moment, as Mark Batterson describes it, is called the adjacent possible. The adjacent possible. This is the moment which links what is now to what could be at a later time. This is the seed that plants the harvest to come. Farmers know all about that. This moment is often a risk, but it is a necessary one to take in order to accomplish what lies ahead. The adjacent possible, Mark writes, is the thing that makes something else possible. Now, how many of you have one of these smartphones? Most of us probably do now. The microchip is the thing that made scientific calculators, personal computers, and smartphones possible. 
The adjacent possible, Mark goes on to say, is one small step that turns into a giant leap. We heard that before, didn't we, when Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. Failure, however, is often looked at in a negative connotation, but it can actually work in our favor. There are times when doors close to us or plans fail and we end up disappointed because we thought something would work out a certain way and it did not. Remember how many times Thomas Edison tried to create the light bulb and how many times he failed before he actually succeeded? If we look back on those closed doors, however, we can actually realize that if it were not for those perceived failures, we would not have moved on to the success that followed, the idea or opportunity that came next. We don't realize it in the moment, but a lot of times our backup plan is God's primary plan for our life. So we can take a risk knowing that even if it fails, this could be the catalyst that leads us to a profound reinvention in our lives. Mark Batterson tells the story of how he and his wife experienced this when they attempted to plant a new church in the north suburbs of Chicago back in the 1990s, and that church plant failed. But then, a short time later, God led them to Washington, D.C., where they started the National Community Church in January of 1996. Today, that church is meeting in seven different locations around the Washington, D.C. area. I, too, had my experience of a perceived failure in ministry about 20 years ago. And I won't go into detail today, but God was able to bring me through that. And with his direction, I've continued to persevere even during this difficult time of the pandemic that we've all been going through this last year. So taking risks leads to awesome moments in our lives. Mark dis, um, um, illustrates this concept by telling a story of a time that he went paragliding with his teenage son in Peru. One of his life goals, and he wanted to bring his teenage son along, was to go and walk up the steps at Machu Picchu. And so after they had done that, they saw an opportunity to go paragliding. And he talks about how fearful he was as he stood on the cliff and the only instruction that he got from the teenager who was Peruvian and half his height that was his tandem partner for this paragliding experience, the only instruction he got was, run as fast as you can off the cliff, then lift your legs. And Mark was like, that's all you've got? <laughs> and so he says, I did what any good father would do. I let my son Parker go first. <laughs> When it was his turn, and he began sprinting toward the edge of the cliff, the entire time he thought, this is crazy, this is crazy, this is crazy. But the moment he jumped off the edge of the cliff and the updraft caught his chute, he found himself gliding through the air thinking, this is awesome, this is awesome, this is awesome. So when we take risks, it can often feel like we're running off a cliff. And the whole time we may be thinking, this is crazy. Yet it's those crazy moments that lead to the awesome moments in life. So what risks have you taken in your life that you thought at the time seemed crazy? And then when you look back on it, you realize just how awesome it was. If you haven't experienced this, you may be missing out on some of God's bigger plans for you if you're just trying to play it safe all the time. Sometimes taking risks makes no sense at all. There could be a moment in your life when taking a risk is totally antithetical to the normal way of living. And people may look at you as though you're crazy, but you know in your heart that it's something that you need to do. Mark again tells the story of when he withdrew from the University of Chicago, which that year that he was in school there, that school was ranked third in the nation. He was 19 years old, and he felt a call to go to Bible college to become a pastor. 
The admissions counselor at the university gave him a confused look, and I'm sure some of his family did as well, but this risky decision has produced huge blessings in his life. I had a similar experience after high school. I started at the University of Illinois as a math and physics major. And two years later, when I felt a confirmation of God's call to go into ministry, which actually had come to me originally from my home church pastor when I was still a senior in high school, I felt that call and I shared it with my family that I was going to change my major into psychology and then after college, go on to seminary. My dad was especially skeptical, and one of my brothers responded by saying, what a waste. Why would you waste your life doing something like that? But when God is calling you to do something, it does not always make sense. It does not always add up, especially to other people around you. As a matter of fact, there will be times when it takes more faith then you can muster to take those steps. But when God places a calling on your heart, it's actually riskier not to make those senseless moves. The concept of this fifth habit that Mark writes about in his book, which is cutting the rope, comes from the story of Elisha Otis, who in 1853 took a great risk by displaying his concept for an elevator break in front of a huge crowd at the World's Fair in New York City. Now, I'm sure you've all probably at some time in your life ridden on an Otis elevator. Well, he stood up on an elevator platform above the people, and he signaled for his assistant to use an axe and cut the rope that was holding him up. Upon doing so, the audience gasped, and the platform began to fall. But Otis was able to demonstrate his event invention, the elevator break, and quickly the elevator stopped. This risk of cutting the rope gave birth to engineers using elevators instead of stairs in their building designs. Before Elisha Otis gave this demonstration in 1853, there were very few buildings in New York City that were taller than five floors. Why? Because nobody wanted to walk up all those stairs. And have you ever tried to carry a sofa up five flights of stairs? <laughs> Not something that you want to do. So in essence, cutting the rope gave birth to the skyscrapers that were never even a thought before Elisha Otis stepped out with a huge risk. In order to win the day, you must evaluate what it is that's holding you back. What risk are you not taking? What rope needs to be cut in your life? And you won't be able to see the possibilities of what could be unless you're willing to cut the rope and take that risk. Mark says that cutting the rope may not even seem safe. But do you know what's really not safe? Playing it safe all the time. The greatest risk in life is taking no risks at all. You could be one decision away from a total renovation of your life. Plan it out, calculate the risk, and then cut the rope. Now, as we approach the end of our series on winning the day, we have one Sunday remaining before we begin the season of Lent. But we still have two habits yet to address. And so I'm going to briefly describe habit number six, which is wind the clock at the end of our time here today. Time is measured in two ways. It is kept chronologically by seconds, minutes, and hours like we do with our watch or our cell phone. But it's also measured by the value in which that time is filled. So often, we're not good stewards of our time. We do not take advantage of every minute that we're given. And we waste time when we could be using it to do something more productive. The verse I shared from 2 Corinthians 9.6 is usually used in reference to financial stewardship, where the Apostle Paul wrote, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, 
And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Paul used it in this context as a symbol of financial stewardship. But I believe it can also be used in reference to all of life and especially to the use of our time. Filling your time wisely is to be productive with every minute that you're giving. Or to paraphrase the Apostle Paul, we reap what we sow. Whether it is used to plan, strategize, create, or implement something, we would not be good stewards of our time if we let countless minutes go by the wayside without filling them with something of greater importance. Now, I'm not saying that we should never take time to rest or relax. We need that, and in fact, we'd be going against God's commandment of keeping the Sabbath if we never take time to rest. But we need to assess how we are using the time that God has given us. Winding the clock, Mark says, means to recognize every moment for what it is, a gift from God. Every minute of the day is an absolute gift that God gives us, and we need to be mindful of what we decide to do with every single gift that we receive. The problem is that we often let ourselves be distracted, especially in today's world of social media and online platforms. There are lots of Weapons of mass distraction out there like these things. <laughs> yeah, we can use these for good, but they can also distract us from the task that we need to be focused on. According to time management experts, the average person gets interrupted every eight minutes. And the average person spends two hours and 22 minutes every day on some form of social media. I'd be willing to bet that the pace of life isn't slowing down anytime soon, Mark says. Advertisements are flooding our lives like never before. And it's very easy to be led down a rabbit hole and to get distracted numerous times per day. Tonight, the Super Bowl will feature commercials designed to get us to buy something. And every one of those Super Bowl commercials will cost $5.5 million for 30 seconds of time. Imagine that. That's a lot of money trying to convince us to buy something. But it takes discipline and intentionality to stay focused on what the task is before us so that we do not waste the time or the gift that God has given us. Habits equal results. And too often we do not take a risk because we're not getting the results that we want. But we fail to realize that these results are often due to the bad habits that we formed in our lives. Mark Batterson is straightforward when he says, your actions are perfectly designed to achieve the results you're getting right now. The best way to change the results that you're getting is by changing your habits and exchanging the bad habits for good habits. Instead of cutting the rope to take a risk, cut the wires of your bad habits and form better, newer habits, good habits. And this will produce more desirable results and you'll be one step closer to having the courage to take that risk and cut that rope so that you can fulfill what God's purpose is for your life. So let me leave you with these questions. How are you using the gift of time that God has given to you? And have you discovered God's purpose for your life? And are you taking the calculated risks to cut the rope and achieve that purpose that God has for you? Amen. And let's pray. God, we thank you that you challenge us today to look at our lives and see where we may be not using time most effectively. And that goes for me too, Lord. I know that's true. Help us, Lord, to keep our focus on you as Peter needed to do when he stepped out of that boat and to keep our focus on the task that you desire for us to accomplish. Lord, we pray that you would help us also to look at where we are in life and what you have called us to, and that we would be willing to cut the rope and step out in faith to take a risk 
to do what you desire to fulfill the purpose that you have placed within us. Guide and direct us by your Holy Spirit as we lift our hearts and lives to you in the strong and mighty name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As we turn to the Lord's Supper today, I would ask you to follow along on the screen. And uh, if you are here in person, feel free to share in the responses, but please keep your mask on. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let's join in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give praise and thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we share in Holy Communion, I would invite those who are here in the sanctuary to take your little cup and get out the little piece of bread. <clears throat> this is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is broken for you. And this is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ poured out for you. Those at home, get your elements as well as we share in Holy Communion together. Let's join together now in the prayer after receiving. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we come to the end of our service today, just a, a few reminders to you. And first, I, I would... Uh, like to remind you that if you would like to provide flowers, please let us know or take one of the slips off the board and fill it out and get it back to Judy in the office. And then also the Community of Viral Disciples is meeting in person again if you want to join with them on Sunday morning at 9.15. Also, our Junior and Senior High Sunday School are meeting in person again, so you're welcome to come back for that. And then I would also remind you that the United Methodist Women are not meeting this Thursday for their regular monthly meeting, but uh, we will, weather permitting, have our prayer time in person here at the church Thursday evening for those that would like to join us at 7.30, and we will have our evening devotions online on Facebook and on the phone line as well. A uh, reminder that uh, we have our Ash Wednesday service on February the 17th, and that will be in person as well as online and on the phone, so you're welcome to come and join us if you'd like in person. And then remember Emma, Irma Tibbetts' birthday coming up the end of the month, and uh, she'll be 90, so please be sure you get cards sent to, to Irma. So with that, let's hear our closing as we go forth today. Loving God, as we go forth from this place, we thank you that you have challenged us to be aware of how we're spending our time and that it is a gift from you, and to be willing to step out in faith and take those risks like Peter did in stepping out of the boat. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you in every moment of our day. We go forth in the powerful name of our Savior Jesus Christ and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless all of you and have a great week.